Hey, the guys, let's talk real fast about the easiest and best ways to uh, to enter food as we're eating it throughout the day, my fitness pal, accurately. So the where we usually start, the fastest way to do this when you open it up, of course, is right here under the plus sign when you go to food. This will pull up a screen that gives you options of which place during the day you ate the food. Now, you don't have to put this in the right place. It doesn't matter. We're just looking at daily totals. But if you're the organized kind of person that, this, that, that really OCDs about this sort of thing, certainly you can choose exactly which meal it is. If you choose a meal, I just chose lunch here. The next thing that's going to pull up, the cool thing is right there on the top of your list as you sort of build a history, is it's going to give you the most recent and the most uh, frequent things. You can choose that recent or frequent, like the things you most frequently eat for lunch or what you most recently ate for lunch. It'll pull that right up. So if you eat the same sort of uh, things day in and day out quite often, then you don't have to look very far. They should be right here in this list. But otherwise, one of the quickest ways to do it is to use the barcode scanner at the top right-hand corner of the square screen. That's always the first place I'll go to. Um, if a food that I have comes in a package or comes in a box or a wrapper that I bought at the store, and I click on this barcode scanner, then right up there, it's going to use my computer right now since we're filming a video, but right up there is a barcode scanner. And when I scan any item, and I've hardly ever found an item that's not already in the MyFitnessPal database, boom, it's going to pull that right up immediately. Here's a protein shake I had earlier. If I'm going to drink that whole protein shake, all I've got to do is click check at the right top right hand corner of the screen like that, boom, and there we go. It is now in MyFitnessPal under lunch today. Um, if you're not going to do that, let's say it didn't come in a package, it's just something that you had at home that's maybe a homemade recipe or some raw foods that you're making out. The first thing that you could do is go back to that food again. Let's enter it into dinner um, and search for it. Um, again, this search is as detailed as you want to make it or as broad as you want to make it. So let's say we're having chicken breast for dinner tonight. And I'm i got to find chicken breast. You can just type in chicken breast and it will come up with some options here, of some commonly uh, entered in chicken breasts. Or if you got something more like specific, let's say you, you got it at Publix and you know it was a Purdue chicken breast. And you type in Purdue chicken breast, right there gives you several good options for Purdue chicken breast. Now, um, we tend to suggest going with a verified option when possible. And those are these top options here with the green check mark next to them. It just means that they've been researched a little bit deeper and verified the macronutrients amounts and within my fitness pal. So grilled chicken breast, well, I don't know if I'm grilling it. It doesn't really matter. I'm going to go with the second cooked chicken breast. So I know this is a cooked entry for chicken breast, at, uh, Purdue chicken breast. And right there, I've got what is macronutrients for one serving of chicken breast. Now, this is where we've got to learn how to change serving sizes. Let's say that one serving in, in my fitness pal here is three ounces, but let's say you're not having three ounces. Let's say that you are having um, five ounces instead of three. Well, you could go down to number of servings and figure out that math. Like, is that one point, what, seven, five servings, 1.66? Like, what is that math? But if you don't want to do that and figure out exactly uh, the number of servings you're having, you can go back up here to the serving size and we can simply change this. How do you weigh it? Uh, you can weigh it in grams. You can weigh in ounces. Let's just say I'm going to weigh it in ounces for this, this, this scenario. So I change my serving size here to one ounce. Hit check mark on that. Now my serving size is one ounce. So if I'm going to eat five ounces of that, I just simply go to here the number of servings now, and I change this to 5.0. Or if you've had five and a half ounces, you could change 5.5. .5. You could really go down to the decimal now of how much uh, of chicken you're having. If I click check, now look at up here what's happened. It's already adjusted based on that math, the actual macros I'm consuming. 1.8 grams of fat, 47.7 grams of protein, and zero carbs. If that's what I'm going to eat, I simply check that uh, entry and boom it goes right there in my fitness pal so that's the fastest two ways to enter in normal foods we eat day in and day out uh, with two little tips on how to change the serving sizes and um, also how to uh, read a barcode scanner lastly we'll go over how to find things that aren't in there this is something we don't recommend using a lot because what i'm going to show you now is how to put estimated foods in there in other words foods that you've eaten out um, the MyFitnessPal database is full and full of all sorts of entries of fast food restaurants and things on the go. So I'm just going to search for one here. Let's say you've had a Chick-fil-A um, um, chicken sandwich. 
And you type, you could type all that detail in there if you want. I'll just type Chick-fil-A chicken sandwich. If I hit search and pull it up right there, it actually gives me the Chick-fil-A menu. I can click this and open up Chick-fil-A's entire menu that they have taken the time to partner with my fitness pal and load in there. And I can select and hand select every little item I'm having off the menu. Or I can go back and I can just go find the first grilled chicken sandwich. Or if you're having a regular chicken sandwich, that's right down here, this verified entry. If I'm just going to have a regular fried Chick-fil-A chicken sandwich, I can click on that. And now I've got to assume if I'm going to eat the whole sandwich that these macros are accurate. Um, it doesn't give me a weight here. It says the serving size is one sandwich. It gives me no options to change that serving size. So this is uh, useful in a bind when we tell you it's sort of an emergency and you're out and you have to use it. You've got to know that these macros aren't going to be perfectly accurate because every sandwich a restaurant gives you is not going to be the same size. It's not going to have the same exact same weight or the same macros. And very rarely will you have the option to change those serving sizes where you could weigh it. If there are nutrition facts on their website, uh, there are several places out there where that's the case, Chipotle and others, where you could uh, separate out the chicken and the beans and the rice and you could figure out exactly how much weight of everything you're supposed to have. That's an option. It's a whole lot more work and a lot more trouble than it's worth. Uh, again, while we usually suggest just uh, eat, cooking and eating most food at home uh, or preparing ahead of time, but in a bind, that's the third way here where we could find a food and then put it uh, most easily in my fitness pal. Okay.